Hello, welcome to Polyphonic Press. I'm Jeremy Boyd, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new album by Johnny Marr entitled The Messenger. Here we go. So Johnny Marr is an English guitarist and singer-songwriter, perhaps best known as a guitarist for the Smiths. He's also known as a producer, producing albums by Modest Mouse and R.E.M.'s Peter Buck. And although he's been in the music business for a long time, this is actually his first solo album. It was released in February of 2013, and it's called The Messenger. This album starts off with a song called The Right Thing Right, and the immediacy of the rhythm and the use of the tambourine really makes it feel like a 60s pop song. Although it alludes to the 60s, it's not stuck there. It's pretty updated and modernized with high fidelity production and uh, sort of heavier guitars than you would typically hear in a 60s tune. During the pre-chorus of this song, I noticed the piano is playing this little weird riff on the lower end of the keyboard, and it's just little things like that that really create a wall of sound for this song. That sound just kind of overtakes you, and although it's pretty poppy, it's very understated, and this song really kind of just hooks you in for the rest of the record and kind of makes you intrigued as to what's to come. The first single from the album is the song Upstarts, which is also a very pop rock oriented song. It really reminds me of songs you used to hear on the radio in the sort of mid to late 90s. It kind of has that gin blossoms kind of dish walla sort of vibe going on with it. Although it has its roots in rock and roll, it's very pop oriented and it kind of walks that line a little bit. But I feel like this is a pretty honest approach to pop music as opposed to being controlled by some corporation or something like that. This song really features some really clean and concise guitar work that feels really planned out yet spontaneous at the same time, which I think is the mark of a really good guitar player. It's kind of hard to do, but if you can make an improvisation sound like it's planned out, you really got something going. The title track, The Messenger, is much more of a mid-tempo kind of rock song. It's really guitar driven and really features some of the best guitar lines on the album. Although the guitar lines aren't the most technically brilliant or the most flashy pieces of music, they really suit the song. And to me, that's what makes a really great guitar, someone who's very technically proficient, but choose Chooses line that better suit the song and don't showboat or anything like that. And this song is a perfect example of that and there aren't really many guitarists who understand that and it's really refreshing to hear a guitarist serve the song rather than himself. Perhaps the hardest rocking song on the album is the song Sun and Moon. It's pretty much a straightforward rock song with a driving beat and really heavy guitars. This is probably my favorite song on the album because it has a really good groove with the bass and drums and the guitars just kind of sit perfectly on top. This is a really good example of a well-crafted song that if it doesn't get released as a single will probably go on to be a really good hidden gem among uh, hardcore fans. And the album ends with the song Word Starts Attack and it's another hard rocking kind of song although the drums are doing something a little bit different. They're playing this kind of offbeat rhythm that kind of gives it a funky almost disco vibe. Right before the choppy kind of solo there's this slight breakdown where all you hear is the bass groove and it's just playing this pulsing rhythm that just really drives the song. And there's all these little parts to the song that kind of make it play out like an opera. I thought this was a pretty strong song, but I don't know if this was the best way to end the album. It doesn't really conclude anything or anything like that. It just kind of stops abruptly. So I don't really know if this was the best way to end the record on this song. I was kind of expecting something more to come along after the song ended, and I was kind of surprised when I didn't hear anything. So it just kind of didn't end well for me. The production on this album is really well done, and I think that's probably because he's worked as a producer as well as an artist, so he sort of understands both sides of the coin. He understands making an album as a producer as well as an artist, so I think having that diversity and having that knowledge really helps with the production aspect of the music as well as the performance. I really like this album. It's chock full of really great guitar tunes, and it's just a really great rock record. Whatever complaints I have are pretty minor, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So anyway, that's what I thought about the album. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or with a video response. And if you'd like to suggest an album for me to review, please leave that in the comments as well, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.